Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video covers alcohol dehydration. This is part two, energy, equilibrium, and practice problems. This slide talks about dehydration and the energy changes in equilibrium associated with the reaction. Dehydration reactions are reversible and equilibrium mixtures of alkenes and alcohols will result. Here's a representative example showing cyclohexanol becoming cyclohexene and water. This is a typical dehydration reaction. The equation that describes the energy changes in this reaction is shown here. Delta G is the overall energy change and it's equal to delta H, that's change in enthalpy, which is the heat part of energy, minus T delta S, where T is the temperature and delta S is the change in entropy or disorder. The overall energy change depends on the heat part of energy and the disorder part of energy. If delta G is negative, the reaction will be favorable. If delta G is positive, the reaction will be unfavorable and reactants will be favored. Delta G affects equilibrium, an equilibrium constant. The bonds are weaker overall in products than reactants and elimination reactions. To see this, let's take an inventory of the bonds that are broken and the bonds that are formed. The bonds that are broken include two sigma bonds which are fairly strong. Here I've highlighted the bonds that are breaking. The reaction requires energy input to break these bonds. Then, in the reaction, some new bonds are formed. There's one sigma bond, which is relatively strong, and one pi bond, which is weaker. Here I'm highlighting the bonds that are forming in the reaction, the sigma bond on the right and the pi bond on the left. When bonds form, energy is released, and the delta H for the reaction, the enthalpy change, depends on whether stronger bonds or weaker bonds overall are being formed or broken. And in this reaction, we are basically trading in some strong bonds for a weak bond. So bonds, therefore, overall are weaker in the products than reactants. That means delta H, the enthalpy change, is positive in this reaction. And in elimination reactions are endothermic, and therefore they favor reactants. Entropy, the disorder part of energy, increases in elimination reactions. One reactant becomes two products. That's an increase in disorder, and that's a positive delta S. Since delta S, the entropy change is positive, that helps make delta G negative, which favors products. So delta H and delta S are at odds in this reaction, and which factor is more important depends on temperature. Since the effect of entropy on delta G is temperature dependent, we have to look at temperature and at room temperature, delta S has a relatively small impact. Therefore, near room temperature, delta G is positive and reactants are favored. This is disappointing if you wanna get a good yield of alkene products, but not all is lost because there's a technique you can use to get a good yield of alkene product, and it's described on this slide. Dehydration reactions are reversible and equilibrium mixtures of alkenes and alcohols result. Here's our representative equilibrium reaction of cyclohexanol with cyclohexene in water. And here I've written the arrows such to indicate that the reactants are really favored here. And that's the conclusion we came to on the previous slide, that at room temperature or near room temperature, delta G is positive and reactants are favored. To get a good yield of alkene products, we can use Le Chatelier's principle, which states that if you perturb an equilibrium, the reaction will respond by trying to reestablish the equilibrium. And here, what you need to do is to remove the alkene products as they form. The reason this works is that alkene and water products have lower boiling points than the alcohol reactant. Therefore, you can distill off the alkenes as they form, and that drives the reaction to products. As you remove alkene products by distillation, more alkene alcohol is able to be converted into alkenes and eventually all of the alcohol can get pushed through to alkene products and water. So this is a good trick if you want to try to get a good yield of alkene product. And I have a video that describes an experiment that does just that. So check that one out if you're interested in seeing this principle in action. On the next slide we're going to do some dehydration practice problems. In this top example we have a tertiary alcohol. Tertiary alcohols react by E1. They form nice stable carbocations and that's the mechanism they prefer. This tertiary alcohol has an alpha position shown here and there's a beta one position, which I'll list up here, along with two identical beta two positions here and here. The elimination reaction will proceed first by protonation of the OH group to make it into a good leaving group and then it will leave to give a tertiary carbocation which can then get deprotonated either in the beta 1 or in one of the beta 2 positions. If the beta 1 position reacts the double bond will be here between beta 1 and the alpha position. Alternatively one of the beta 2 positions might get deprotonated in which case one of the options would be the following product where the two methyl groups 
are cis to one another, but there's another stereoisomer that could form where the methyl and the ethyl are cis. These are the three possible products. Based on Zaitsev's rule and alkene stability, this would be the major product because it's the most highly substituted alkene, a tri-substituted, and between the two tri-substituted alkenes, there's less steric strain associated with this one because the two methyl groups are cis, whereas in the other example, a methyl and an ethyl are cis. The lower example is a primary alcohol, so the mechanism is going to go by E2. The OH group gets protonated by tosic acid, but it can't leave directly. A base has to come by and deprotonate it, and when it does, it'll give an alkene product between the alpha and beta positions and produce this alkene. On the next slide, we have some molecules that have some stereochemistry. In the top example, we have a secondary alcohol, and secondary alcohols react by E1 mechanism. The OH group gets protonated by the phosphoric acid, the strong acid. It'll leave and give a carbocation, and then the carbocation could be deprotonated in either one of these two beta positions. And I'm going to list them as beta 1 and beta 2 because they lead to two different stereochemical outcomes. If the beta 1 position is deprotonated, the double bond ends up between alpha and beta 1, and that leads to one stereoisomer product. The other possibility is that the beta 2 position gets deprotonated, in which case the double bond ends up between alpha and beta 2. And these two molecules are actually enantiomers of each other. They're different products. They're non-superimposable mirror image molecules. In the lower example, we have a tertiary alcohol, which will go by E1 mechanism because those can give nice stable carbocations. The OH group will get protonated, it'll leave, that'll give a carbocation, and then that carbocation can get deprotonated in a number of different ways. The alpha position is there, and there's a number of beta positions. There's a beta 1 position here, a beta 2 position here, and a beta 3 position here. So we need to consider all these different options when we decide what product mixture we'll get. One option is to have the double bond form between the alpha position and the beta 1 position. That would lead to the following product, which is a tetra-substituted alkene. Another possibility is that the beta 2 position might get deprotonated, and if that happens, the double bond would be between alpha and beta 2. And the final possibility is that proton in the beta 3 position might be deprotonated, and that would lead to a double bond between alpha and beta 3, which is a tri-substituted alkene. So of the three possible products, we have a disubstituted, a tri-substituted, and a tetra-substituted. And since the tetra-substituted is the most stable, that'll be the major product. If you'd like to learn more about predicting elimination reaction products, check out my prior video on the topic at the link provided. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.